Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Better Safe Than Sorry. I'm here today with Rachel. Hey Rachel, how's it going? Hi Peter, I'm happy to be here. So today I want to talk with you about something I've been working on for a couple of days. Um, so here I've um, got a phone application and I've implemented a sign-up screen. I wanted to get your opinion about it. What are you using for authentication, Peter? So I was thinking to use email and password authentication because you know it's so easy to get started with. What do you think? I think that it definitely seems easy at first, but it's harder to do well than you would think. Hmm. Why is that? Well, to start, it's hard for users. They have to remember a password, or if they're using a password manager, they have to like manage their password. I remember when I um, started using email and passwords a long while ago, I used passwords that I could remember. Um, and you know, I realized that was not a good thing. So I started using password managers to manage that for me and to enable me to use really strong passwords. Yeah, I think that it's a great move if you have to have passwords. But a lot of people aren't as technical as you. And they might not know about password managers. They might not know how to use them. So a lot of people are still just remembering their passwords. OK, cool. So I are not cool. <laughs> I mean, I guess we need to find a way to make it easier for them to create strong enough passwords, right? So that's probably something that we need to talk about. But from my perspective as a developer, it's super simple to implement email and password authentication. I mean, look at look at the code for the application. It's literally just one line of code. Firebase authentication does make it really easy to implement yeah. authentication. Uh, that's true. But if you look at it more closely, it can be harder to implement well. Why is that? One thing that you might want to add that I don't see here is something around a password recovery flow. Why do you think that's important? I mean, like users come up with the password and then um, they memorize it or they store it in their password manager. Why do they need to recover the password? Well, they might forget it. Um, and then they want you don't want to just lock them out of the app. And there is a way in the console to send a reset password but you can't really scale that up. That means that your users have to get in contact with you, and mm. you have to send out the reset. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I wouldn't want my users to call me in the middle of the night, especially if my app is viral and you know I get millions of new users in a short time. Yeah, for sure. OK, so uh, password, um, um, the verification flow is uh, an important thing. What else is important? So you mentioned password verification or like user verification, and that's another thing that's really important. You want to have a way to uh, to know for sure that the user who's signing up actually has the email address that they're using to sign up. I get email every now and then where it seems like somebody signed up for some service and then they used my email address probably accidentally. So I receive email. <laughs> Saying, hey, you know, um, your your so and so is ready. Come pick it up. And apparently, it's another person. So that's one case of that, right? Yeah, and that sounds like it was someone unintentionally typoing their email address and mm. accidentally ending up on your email address. It's also possible for someone to knowingly use a wrong email. So if I signed up for an account for your app with an email that I know is not my email. I might want to keep someone else from being able to use that email address. Mm. Or if someone does a password reset, then they would have access to the account that I created. So it just gets into this very murky water. And you want to always make sure that you're verifying email addresses. Yeah, I can see why that's important. So one way to do that would probably be to take the email address that the user input into the form and then send it to my server. The server sends them an email with a link. That's a deep link. They click on the link. They come back into my application, and it carries a code. And then I can verify that this has been the user who signed up for the app in the first place. Right? Would that be OK? Yeah, and Firebase authentication makes that pretty smooth to do. You can look at the Firebase UI implementation of how we do a password verification, mm -hmm. or sorry, a user verification, to have an idea of how we're making that work. So uh, we want to make sure that the user actually exists. We have the password recovery flow. Oh, yeah, and then probably password strength, right? That's another thing. Um, 
Uh, what's your suggestion there? If you're going to use passwords, it's really good to help users choose good passwords. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot of this on the client side, but I think you want to walk a balance between helping them choose a good password and being too prescriptive. Because if they're using a password manager, their password manager is already going to do a lot of this work for you, and you don't want them. You don't want to fight their password manager by having very mm. like specific requirements. So I stick to something around length. I want to say it has to be 20 characters, mm -hmm. and I might require it to be an uppercase and a lowercase because most password manager is already doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not fighting their password manager, and I'm still helping users choose good passwords. I remember seeing an API um, that uh, allows you to do that using the operating system support. So for example, on iOS, you can say, hey, this input field here is a new password field, or it's um, for a one-time code, or it's for just for inputting your password. And then um, the operating system will detect that this is for a new password, and it will suggest a strong password. And then the user doesn't have to come up with one. And the operating system will also store it in its built-in password manager. So I love these operating system-specific password managers. The only drawback is that it's a little bit tricky if you initially create your account on one platform, and then you need to use mm. the password on another platform. So that's a limitation. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I prefer just getting out of the password business altogether. Are you referring to federated identity providers like Sign-In with Apple or Google Sign-In? That's one that I really like. I especially like Sign-In with Apple because they are verifying all email addresses, which is mm. great. The other thing that I really like is Sign-In with Email and Link. The way that that works is when someone signs up for, your, for an account, it sends them an email. And then to sign in, they click the link in the email to sign in. So it's getting us out of the business of passwords. And it's always, it's always verifying the email address, which is great. That sounds pretty cool. Um, I think I would love to talk more about this in detail, but we're already a little bit short on time. So um, how about we do another video just about those? I would love to. OK, cool. And that was another episode of Better Safe Than Sorry, where we talk about everything authentication and security to help you build better and safer apps. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. And we will see you in the next one. <laughs>